Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alfo here with KissAnalog.com. Today, this is going to be a good day. We're going to do a quick video on uh, power supply brick. We all wonder how good these things are, right? So switching power supply inside here because it's small. And this is what you get with the V3 uh, mono block back here. So the it's actually kind of, it, well, it's longer than the, than the amplifier. Okay, we have the AC power coming in here. It's just two pins. We don't have ground coming in because plastic case, so we don't need the ground. And because the chassis ground ties all the metal parts together so they're all safe. But when you're dealing with plastic, we don't have to worry about getting shock touching it, right? So you don't need the ground chassis on, on this. Now the output, it's also just two pins. It's 48 volts, five amps. So you get a plus and a return. You can call it ground if you want, but ground's so, you know, confusing it's <laughs> so but it's 48 volts it's isolated from this take an ohmmeter from here to here you don't see anything right transformer in there switching power supply it recreates the voltage on this side and it's isolated okay so some people will use a linear power supply you know because they'll use a traditional low frequency switcher you know the diodes the rectifier the commutate turning on causing these big current spikes as they charge up a bulk capacitor through a transformer you know and then you linear regulate it that's a linear power supply if you don't linear regulate like the power amplifiers they typically don't then it's just a low frequency switcher so here's the thing i bought some of these guys uh to do power up some of these class d amps and I was kind of bummed out because the input section was the classical low frequency switcher. The commutating diodes, you know, creating big pulses of current um, as they turn on and off, switching. And, and then they charge up a bulk capacitor and then there's a switching power supply, maybe a flyback or something, uh, regulating the output voltage, okay? That, and, and actually I got an LLC supply, still had the traditional low frequency switcher in front. That was, you know, kind of a letdown because I want, the reason why is those high pulse currents are noisy, right? It's big pulse of current. What I want is the current to come in sinusoidal, like the voltage. And the way uh, active power factor correction circuit does that is I've done some videos on this, but essentially it's letting a little bit of current come through when the voltage is near zero and let's a little bit more a little bit more as the voltage rises okay so the current kind of like a class d lc filter on that but use the L lc to smooth out that to make it sinusoidal okay so if you can do a perfect job of that you can get a power factor equal to unity meaning the voltage and the current are in phase with each other they're in phase and they're the same shape Power factor is not only is the current in front leading or lagging, the, the other factor of that is distortion noise. Any power that comes into the input from the AC power supply that doesn't get to be used at the output of that power supply is, uh, well, in the conversion from AC to DC, uh, whatever's lost there is you know is is unusable power right so it's part of your power factor anyway so what we want in this is we want to measure it to see if we get real high power factor um if we're only getting around 60 70 percent then they might be using a traditional low frequency switch which is a bummer because then you could have 60 hertz noise on it and that with the act power factor correction should be a lot cleaner those things are much more friendly with emi why because noise they're not putting out as much noise so we've seen how well we're uh we're measuring thd up here and so we're, we're doing a good job so this guy's pro and it, it doesn't really change a low power and high power so uh this guy is probably pretty clean right so let's check the power factor to see how good it is and how efficient it is that's another giveaway. The traditional power supply is not as uh, efficient. Those pulsating DC currents and the low frequency switcher causes these high current spikes, which going through the diode 
0.7 volt drop, even if you use shockies, the higher volt shockies, they're not like 0 0.4, 0 0.3, they're more like 0 0.5. They're still less than a silicon, but they can uh, still dissipate some energy, right? So the, the active power factor correction can be more efficient up in the 90s, okay? So anyway, let's come over here, take a quick measurement and see how good this guy is. Okay guys, so with the amplifier turned on, but not running, not any power signal input. I don't know if you can see that, but it's 118, you know, 115 volts kind of jumps around. Power factor is about 0.7, kind of bounces around. And we have about nine watts. And that's at the input with nothing running, okay? And here's the input. So I don't have it turned on here. So that's what we, have right now okay we're set up for a thousand hertz let me go ahead and turn on the signal okay it's on okay we got about 95 watts on one now that's actually times two because you know it this is calculating for eight ohms instead of four ohms i gotta see how that's settable but anyway that's where it's set right now all right guys and the voltage is about 119 now at the output 230 watts okay Power factor, look at that. This is crazy. It's one, one. There's no leading or lagging. It's just one. That is crazy. VA 230. Watts 230. Isn't that crazy? 60 hertz. We're in the US, so 119, 192 amps. Okay, so 230 watts coming out of the power supply, the, the AC power source. And then some of that power is dissipated here. It's a little warm. And, so, and some of it's just paid in the amplifier, okay? And then we have that 95, so, you know, it's two times that, right? So it's like 180 watts being dissipated in these two 200-watt resistors, okay? So they get hot really fast. I mean, they're big old resistors, but... And they are rated for 200 watts, but... Um, so each one's putting about half the power it's rated for, which means it's going to get really hot, and it is. The amplifier's cool in comparison. Okay, right now we're only about 40C. I got the thermal probe kind of stuck underneath it. So, and that's and that's our signal. Okay, so we're dissipating about 40 watts, 40.8 watts between this and that. The overall efficiency is about 82.3%. So, yeah, so that's pretty darn good, guys. 82% between the power supply and the amplifier. So, overall, 82%, uh, percent, just a little bit better than that, at max power. Okay? Well, and I'm calling max power, max clean power, about 190 watts. All right, so now we're at one watt input, okay? Now look at that distortion, it's crazy. It's like saying zero. So, um, okay, so the amplifier's right here and it's a little bit warm, 42 degrees, because I was at 190, but it dropped down. Resistors are just scorching out. They're gonna start cooling down. That's our signal, one watt. And now look at this, this is 13.3 watts now. Remember, nine watts with nothing. So an extra four watts right now with one watt out. So now it's like the efficiency is terrible because the level is so low. We have a lot of headroom, the nine watts, plus the efficiency of the system is a lot lower at low amplitudes, which we don't care because we're only dissipating a few watts. But power factors, 0.87. It's not as good either because now, but the input power of the power supply is not as good. So that's why the power factor. So there you go. Pretty darn good. I'm super impressed with these guys. I have two because I also have a, another amplifier that takes one of these, another Fosse amp. Hey guys, uh, free way to support the channel is like the video. Okay, just thumbs up the video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so that'd be big I really want to grow the channel uh, so I can do more videos and stuff alright guys I want to give two big thumbs up to Fosse for sending me out the 
Quasi V3 mono block and it came with this power supply. So yeah, thank you, Fossi. And hey, thanks iTech for sending me out this IT7321. I've had that for a while now, done some videos on it, but hey, thanks iTech. I love that little AC power supply. That's awesome. It's neat because I can measure all the power factor. What's the cool is audio precision also does that stuff, but yeah, it's just cool that I can do it right here. I can measure it here and, uh, and get the full, you know, efficiency from the brick to the through the amp and all that. So that's really neat. So yeah, I really like that guy. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. And two big thumbs up to my patrons, my YouTube members, and Danny for being a team member. Thanks, appreciate it, guys. And for those of you guys that hit that super thank you button, kind of flash it up on the screen. Appreciate that. That buys me a cup of coffee, maybe a beer for a rant, that kind of thing. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, been a long weekend. Hopefully, you've had a good one. Uh, we'll catch you next time.